Tracy, thank you very much for finding time in time to talk about the pig business. When did the pig business really start, and what was the what was the beginning of your journey? The beginning of my journey was when Tom Garrett, I think it was in two thousand and three, spoke at Julian Rose's local food seminar, and he said how the European Bank for Reconstruction and Development had given $25,000. That's a taxpayer-guaranteed loan to Smithfield Foods of America, which is a $12 billion turnover pig company. They shouldn't need preferential loans from development banks. And that company had grown huge in Poland and was incredibly unpopular. And it seemed that that bank wasn't listening, wasn't interested at in the impact of this company. And basically I'm seeing around the world these development banks are giving huge loans to what are medium-sized farms to make them gargantuan. And these farms are very, very good for other giant, but this time private banks, to invest in. So very large private banks can then piggyback off these development banks and make massive profits out of these very, very large pig companies. And this system has spread across the globe. So now we not only have an international version, which has got Britain, America and Poland in it, we are actually making versions of countries who are saying, please can we have a pig business film that concentrates, for example, on Romania, so that they can use it as a tool to inform local people of what is happening to their food industry. And particularly, local farmers simply don't understand why they're going bankrupt. And it's because these very large factory farms that have been subsidised by favourable loans from development banks are flooding their markets with ever cheaper pork, not only imported from these giants in other countries, but now you have Eastern European countries which are giving massive subsidies to these banks. You've got Eastern European governments that are giving massive subsidies to these giant companies to come into their country so that their country is not a net importer of cheap pork. Now they actually are exporting, but very little of the money is actually staying in that country because these factory pig farms are highly mechanised. So that means very few jobs stay in that country, and the money for those com companies go into the global money markets, repaying loans from giant foreign banks. Thank you, Joyce. Which countries so far have a, uh, a localised version of the pig business to, to show citizens? We first of all did a Canadian version big business, simply because I went there to speak at a conference, and we just added what is going on in this factory farming system in Canada, and how dangerous it is with the processing system, that there was literally one problem with the chopper, and they got listeria in an enormous batch of pork, and they had to withdraw them from their supermarkets. We also have done an American version which shows what is going on in America with these factory farmers undermining local producers. But as most of the film, or a good deal of the film, is already American, that tweak at the end was not a huge amount. However, we have done a Romanian version, which was a natural slot-in, because Smithfield went, first of all, from America to Poland, and they were so unpopular in Poland that, as Richard Paulson, the vice president, said, they've hedged their bets by also investing in Romania, where the government is still oiling up to them and giving them massive subsidies. In fact, what I was told was that Smithfield's profits in the fiscal year 2011 were $7.9 million. Now, that is a lot of money. However, it's down by 74% on the previous fiscal year, 2010. And the reason is that they've received less subsidies from the Romanian government, and less by $34 million. Now that is the type 
of incentives which governments are giving these companies to come into their markets so that they are not anymore just being flooded by cheap imports from giant companies in other countries. For example, Smithfield in Poland or Danish companies, Dutch companies. So what you've got is competition between very, very large multinational pig companies with government subsidies and it's not working for the small scale farmers, it's not working for the consumer because this meat is far less quality than if it came from a small scale family farm and also there's massive more cruelty because basically there's terrible conditions inside these factory farms where the, for example the mother pig can't even turn around, her crate is so tiny and actually these factory farms are pushing the whole pig industry to cram ever more pigs into these sheds to be able to compete with these giants. So fundamentally what we're seeing is a banking system that makes money out of the giant factory farms controlling our food system because those banks also fund the elections for our systems because the money for elections are not coming from the public purse. So these governments are having to oil up to these big companies to get money to fund the elections. So they're basically stooges of big business and big banks. So we have to, as consumers, since we don't have a system of democracy that represents people anymore, it's representing big banks and big business, we as consumers have to use our power in our purse to buy food from small-scale farmers, and that would encourage better democracy, because we'd stop these massive factory farms dictating the rules of our lives. Thank you, Tracy. One of the things that is always difficult is that consumers don't see the whole picture of the industry, do they, Tracy? Well, big industries have an enormous amount of money to put into promoting their product. And I was just listening to a translation of the interview of a Romanian farmer. And she says that in Romania, people watch the television. They see how that is the right pork to buy at the supermarket. It's extremely healthy. And the same was said in Ecuador. People are very influenced by these adverts. And also the governments are being persuaded by the lobbies that actually the small farms are a liability in terms of biosecurity, in terms of disease, in other words. So you're getting governments actually with a policy to get rid of the small-scale farmers, when in fact it's the giant companies that are the breeding grounds of disease. For example, the Smithfield farm in Romania, it opened and immediately had swine fever and they had to slaughter 68,000 pigs and it cost them 11 million euros and actually they tried to get that back from the EU and although the Romanian government denied having given the money back the subsidies from the Romanian government the following year were of the same amount so they have a huge amount of influence and power not only on the government but on the consumers and it really is through tools like pig business, which is a play on big business, that are influencing the consumer to recognise that actually it is worth paying a little bit more for your pork to buy from the small-scale farmer where the pig has had a decent life, where the money stays in the locality, and where you actually see democracy working because we're actually being controlled by big money from big banks and big business, and we need to take back control. Tracy Worcester, thank you.